Good morning. It's the second last day of April now. And it's finally gotten dry. I can even go around with my runners on. <coughs> I get one tool a year. This is my tool for 2023, battery operated edge trimmer. I got it mainly because I have things like these uh, grapevines that was growing out in the path in my way and I was taking up too much time to, for cutting them back and keeping them out of the way. But I had lots of other things I wanted to do with it as well. And first thing I need to do in the spring is cut back anything that I need to cut back before the uh, vegetation starts growing. And so we're gonna start here now. Remember I said I was gonna put this one back. With battery operated things you have to actually have two hands. You got one button here and one button here. There we go, as I said, this grows up from the roots and it just builds on what it was last year and you get dead stuff in behind and you get this mass building out and out. And so I cut it down and it'll grow up from the roots again. As far as those branches of the uh, spruce tree, I think it's best for me to get the pole pruner and cut them down. nice I can cut off the suckers of that too fairly easy how I like this is a type of tree it's good to have a edge trimmer with as well I couldn't do this before because it didn't have edge trimmer right now I can go around and have it kind of in a semi dome shape get a ladder and snick off the top part. The branch is broken anyway, I gotta get him some other way. Excuse the big jungle wood, I don't want to put it down into the driveway now because I'm backing up there with the truck. I'm using the truck to bring down the firewood. So of course this is the Shasta Daisy as far as I know. I didn't plant it there, it was here when I got here. I just split it into two, put one on either side of the steps. But that's what it looks like. And with the frame around it, I'm gonna put a better frame around it eventually, hopefully this year. But now it should be fairly easy to cut down. There, that's actually the first time I clean out around those since I planted them there. You see there's two bunches, eh? And those wide green leaves there, so that's the base. So I've got to cut right down to the new growth now. And it should be 
quite beautiful when it grows up. The uh, St. John's Ward, this is. Getting it out from where the new growth is coming up that I need it clear before the new growth comes. That'll be good just like that. Now here's another one that because I'm not going to be pulling this up right away and honestly I don't know if I ever be pulling it up but I think it will look better if I trim it back to a dome shape. So since I got this thing, I'm going to do that. Just like that. I think I mentioned this in the but I gotta do something with that. But as for these little pieces that I don't want, I can trim these off right now. Low down stuff. Gonna be in my way when I come around with the lawnmower. Like so, and I'll figure that one out one day. When you've got a big lavender, you can shape them too. Um, of course, any such bush. This one has got all those flower stalks up from last year. So I'm going to shape this now. There, that's the edge trimmer work. Now we gotta get a wheelbarrow and go around and pick that stuff up. I forgot, I wanna see how much I can pull up and cut this mess of grass off. Not going to have many grapes this year. Found the choice. Now this boy needs to rest a while. But I think I got done what I wanted to do. 
with the hedge trimmer. You see the tulip leaves coming up there? There's tulip bulbs and another type of bulb down there somewhere. Here's the chives right here. Now that I've rested, I can pick up the debris. One bunch. Mostly grasses, I'm going to lay this on top of the compost bin. Normally the leaves is not something I worry about. Uh, I just let them lay and out in the lawn. Of course, they'll be picked up with the lawnmower. <clears throat> but right there near the fence is a uh, lovage. So I rake the leaves off of that. And whatever was caught up around the St. John's wart. In the wheelbarrow was the wood that was behind the shed that I figured I could burn in the wood house. There's a wheelbarrow load down there that I got up uh, all around the yard and I put one in the basement already. So the one I got in the basement I got from here. I'm really proud. Now I, I even cleared away all the sticks here and piled them up in that pile. So I'm proud of myself for that. I tightened up this pile and there was some chunks of wood, like I said, that I brought down by the basement door. Everything's cleaned up here. I couldn't put these black ones down by the maple tree yet because when they're empty they'll blow away so I have to keep them there where there's not so much wind. I got most of the stuff off here. Now I have to, this is something I have to deal with sooner rather than later. I just take this apart, um, repurpose what I can repurpose and burn what wood that's no longer any good. <coughs> and of course, so down here is where the wood that was in the wheelbarrow was. I had that sawmill and I was cutting some up. I think this is still good for to me for woodworking. So I'm going to put that in the shed and all of the siding. I have to organize it better. There maybe I'll tie it together in bundles and put it neatly back against the shed uh, and then this area will be clean and I'm not going to use these two beds but the second set of beds are out all the way up there we'll be using for gardening so tomorrow I'll search the garden for bits of garbage 
and pick it all up and then we'll be ready to go to start on working on garden beds have it all gathered up into this area now and to go through it and put the stuff that's sorted out what's good in the organized boneyard uh, what I can't use goes in either a recycling bag or into a uh, garbage bag just a couple things now that window that's going to be very difficult to move I'm going to start fixing up that greenhouse you'll see the windows I got here in a bit but for that one I'll put a platform down there and I'll just tip it down and put the other windows on top of it and I found a place to put those two uh, lawnmowers now then I can move that trailer over going straight across that driveway so that when I got stuff to sell I can actually put that there and people going down I know I'm on the end of a rabbit trail but people do come down here for a drive and people around town can see that I have things for sale so here's what I picked up around that the blue bags that's recyclables and the clear bags is garbage got the quad trailer right full but I'll be able to clean up this now. Just take the here's concrete the pads there. See, so I take the line trimmer and just clear that. Nice. This has all been packed back. I've got the siding packed in here. Now I have the siding. I can replace. Well, not replace. Just put the siding right over this uh, siding on the shed and the other side is really kind of worse than this side actually and it kind of needs to get covered up so that was one of the ideas I had when I actually took this uh, when my uncle was removing it from his house you see I've done around the hen house with it already coming down here I have that's that hardware cloth they call it so it's a quarter inch mess, mesh that I use for making the screens for sifting compost. There's nine of these here. The wood is still strong enough. All I need to do is poke stakes in the ground and uh, tie them to it. So I have nine uh, three foot by three foot, I think it is. Uh, trellises for growing peas and other cucumbers what up there should be another one of these around here somewhere because this is a ramp for running a quad up aboard a pickup truck so there should be another one but you see this square tubing that is the same material that uh, some of the makers of broad forks use so I have the material there to make the main portion of the broad fork these pieces this is a bed frame thing but this is similar to what goes underneath the pan of a pickup truck and I have to redo the pan of my pickup truck and I think I'm going to need this to uh, completely fix it back to close to what it was originally. In behind here, that is, it was the fad at one point, the railing for a uh, balcony or veranda. Excellent uh, trellises. The one there on the angle, I could maybe straighten it out and that's another one that was going down a stairway now in back there that bed frame I don't know if those verticals are solid or pipe when I get it out and see how strong they are if they're strong enough that would be good for the tines for the uh, broad fork this is a solid bar solid metal bar um, but it's too big for uh, times for a broad fork of course. 
technically though, I could make uh, one of those. That's another way they make uh, broad. Whole bunch of windows. See that size window there. There's four of those, and this long one. They all open. This one's got one that opens on this end, and all four of those have windows that open. For the most part, these here, I might have to take it apart and just use the glass in these windows. I don't know what that window back there. I think that window back there is. Uh, very good and it also opens this is the heaviest window here fairly big just picture window and back there that's for one of those little uh, corner shower stalls complete with the door so all of that to go for putting in the greenhouse to put together a greenhouse somehow and this is the ancient windows back in the day when they actually had just uh, wooden frames and they cut slots in the frames and slid glass into it. That's what that is from. A whole bunch of panes there. So that go for the greenhouse. That would be very arid metal. There's two at least two times there. Of course, if I knew someone who had a forge, we'd be able to straighten out this part, but I don't know anybody with a forge, so I guess that would be off the cards. But you get at least in times for the broad fork off of that. And there's another window. This bike, when I left home in uh, 1993 so it would have been the next year I bought it in 94 or 95 and I rode that all over the Fraser Valley the wood I had to take into the shed and cut up it's a miserable day out you see in back here now this gate that's a perfect trellis for putting cucumbers. You know one of those where you lean it over and you just have the vine run up there. So a, a uh, trellis, uh, cucumbers or the small vine, the uh, squash. Perfect trellis there. This is a, from a treadmill. I've already taken the rollers off it. I've got them in use in the shed for the outfeeds for my table saw. You see I brought all the wood over here waiting for a day like today, a miserable day. Yeah, I'm going to bring this into the shed now and cut it up. I got There's a whole bunch of metal pieces on here. I don't know what I'll find when I uh, go to cut it up. Of course the hitch on this it's made with the uh, at uh, rebar, I think they call it. So that's something else can be used for tines on a broad fork. Now I found this out in the grass. That's why it's all rusty, but I think there's more of these around here somewhere. In which case, I mean, they could be used for the tines on a uh, broad fork as well. So that's it. That's where I'm going to end the video. I'm going to uh, cut this up today, like I say. And uh, there. Hope that was interesting on uh, what I got up to today. Next week is supposed to be sunny, so hopefully I'm going to get out and clean up the actual planting areas. Thank you for watching.